All right, so first we're gonna prime the bottles here. Yep. Put those five right there in the neck. Station. Okay, then. We're gonna start on the middle. Always want an odd number. But don't fill in that last gate part. Correct, you always want the spacing in between there. Because when okay. we go to fill position, these two will switch to here and everything will move down line. Right, okay. Yeah. Got our odd number there. work back to our fill nozzle. So odd number odd number here, odd number here? Correct. Okay. And then these can Actually well, this, this this is even odd odd. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we can do some dry this. running, I'll show you how that works. Yep. Okay. Um so that that's your line prime right there. And then I'll do sometimes some dry run features where we'll get into the controls here in a minute. That, that's your initial setup. Like I said, we've got some nice drawings we'll get we we'll provide for you as well on how to set up indexing for a dual head. Okay. So that's set up. The next step is you do you come in here, power the machine up, so as long as you've got your sensors made. Power up the machine. Top is your status bar. That's gonna tell you things at once or if it's missing. So right now. You would technically be ready to run, but we're going to go in and show you how to configure things and see where come back. So this, this is your typical run screen there. So what we would do next is actually come into our test menu, and you can actually run the conveyor and check, check the indexing to make sure bottles are moving properly. So we turn our conveyor on, get back it up to speed, and then when you press the index button, that'll switch the pins one way. That's what it would look like during the filling portion. You want to stop, you go back, and next bottles will come into place. This okay. is part of, part of your set. You can get in and verify that things are moving, things are still ending up where they're supposed to be. Um, sometimes for training purposes, you can come in and mark your bottles like full, empty, full, empty, just to get that visualization of, of what discharge there to here. Okay. So that, that's. That's a big part of your setup right there. Uh, I want to get back into the controls here in a second, kind of go through what all that is. Uh, but that's your initial bottle setup. You know, if you needed to make some tweaks, loosen your lever, shift the pin a little bit to make sure things are as precise as you can get. But what you're looking for when those indexing pins shift is bottles aren't jumping and knocking over and, and things like that. So everything seemed pretty smooth there. Everything shifted the way it's supposed to. And everything moved into position properly. You're checking guide rail tension and everything. You want to make sure bottles are still moving. Everything looks like to you. Okay. All right, what we've got there, I'm going to walk now. I'm going to, I'm going to actually turn the machine off for a second. Well, let me show you this feature here. Basically, that's not having a funnel in place. You cannot put power to it unless you've got a funnel in place or something in here. Mm -hmm. So you guys got a clean out to our clean out dummy that will go in there? No. Because once you take the funnel off, the uh, water starts turning. Well, it, it, exactly. So no, there's no clean out. You know, you, as soon as you pull, as soon as you expose anything in there, no power. But we do, there is a hub, of an alignment fixture you could put in there if you needed to run the machine, but I always advise just put the, the funnel in place. Okay, so we do have a test fixture you can put in there to verify alignment of the coupling to the drive shaft, which we'll go over as well. Okay. Um, here's all the information about your machine, software and things like that, call number if you ever need us. Okay. And as you can see, up top, no control power, check emergency stop circuit. Again, these are wired into the emergency stop. So emergency stop, as well as these wire back into that safety circuit. Once you get into your main screen, I'll, I'll just go through some of this without the machine being on. There's a lot going on here. Um, what we're actually doing is telling you, filler one, filler two, what's happening? So your IO is a little light up, different colors as the machine's running. So if, as the auger turns on, that'll turn green. As the agitator turns on, that'll turn green. When it turns off, it goes back to a red state. Conveyor speed, you can increase or decrease right here. 
total counts of, of basically your production run. Per minute? Uh, total counts is total bottles filled that day. Oh, right? okay. Um, CPM is your containers per minute. Here's your auger settings, uh, 33, you know, how many revolutions you're making. Uh, up top, the recipe number is just going to tell you whatever the product name is that was entered, uh, as well as the target weight that was entered. Okay. Uh, again, more I.O. here. So we can start getting into, oh, something else to point. Top left corner, that is the screen number. So if you ever guys have a trouble when you talk to the service guys, you can tell them what screen number you are. Okay. Um, system, here is where you would recall existing memory. So you've got one to 100 memories you can populate within here. Um, and you can actually just manually scroll through them, uh, or you can jump into one. All right, reset your total counts for the day. Again, production counter. Um, you can copy new recipes. So instead of having to go in and enter all the data as far as index time, conveyor speed, lift methods, you can copy a recipe, give you a bulk of the settings, then adjust accordingly. So you can say copy recipe two to recipe five or something like that. Okay, we want to do that because we have an 18 ounce. So on the larger bottle, we have a 16 ounce and yep. an 18 ounce in the same bottle. Okay. So, so you could have two recipes copy. for that. Yep. yep. So you, that's where you would use that copy, copy yep. feature. So you just say, sure. you know, copy this recipe to this, and it just saves you a couple minutes of putting in programs. Um, set date and time speaks for itself. Jump back to the main screen. Um, setup. So once you you pick a recipe, you're going to write to. Okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to rewrite one. You pick a recipe. Go back to your main. This is where you would set up your initial recipe. Okay. So here's where you would set up the name, all your auger parameters, transfer time, fill advance, delay after fill, all the settings as far as moving the container and filling the container. Okay. Yeah, and you're gonna get that little warning here. Fill advance is for free flow products only. What that means is as you're bringing a bottle in, you can start the filling portion before the bottle gets into place. With your tooling, not so easy because you're dosing right here versus free flow, you'd be dosing up here and letting it fall. Mm. So you guys don't have to worry about that. The feature's there if you do get another product you want to run on the machine. Now. All right. So we're back out of that. Uh, containers cycle. So this is where you would pick how many containers per cycle you're filling. We're going to be filling two. Container needs per cycle of the machine. You can change that to one if you wanted to index one bottle and do 50% of the fill here and 50% here, or 75, 25, whatever it may be. And we do give the option to go to four, because sometimes you can split the flow of powders and fill two jars off one arm. It doesn't work well for your powder. <laughs> but that, that's what that is, so that'll either be two or one for you folks. All right. In here is going to be your agitation control. That's the sweeper arm within the hopper. So I usually recommend you put that on with fill with, let's say, an off-delay timer of about a second. So when the auger starts, the agitator starts. When the auger stops, that timer starts. So the auger will stop, the agitator will run for one more second and then stop, and it'll start again when the auger starts to dispense powder into the next bottle. Once upon a time, even your machine now, if you put that on continuous, it'll never, ever, ever turn off. No, no. So even if, even if you go to break, that agitator runs. And the pro problem is it'll pack material down in the flights of the auger, let's say over an hour, two hours, three hours, you can actually pack so much material in there, you'll break your auger. Yeah, that's happening. So I always recommend with fill with some sort of an off delay timer. I don't care if it's five seconds. It'll turn off in five seconds versus never. Yeah. So after, after you shut down the machine. Well, if you e-stop the machine, it turns off. If you stop the machine, that turns off. But if you're in a running condition and say we just pause the machine and we walk away, or let's say there's no bottles on the conveyor, we go into a soft stop, like a pause, and it will restart when bottles are present again. The agitator continues to go because you're still in a running state of the machine. It's just waiting for bottles. So that, that's what that is. Um, here is your level control settings again. So you can either request product, uh, and if you do have that on, you can actually do some controls doesn't do anything for your diverter valve. That's more for a vacuum system or a screw feeder. We turn it on for a duration of time, turn it off for a duration of time to let that level control really see how much power just you know, came into the hopper. So 
you guys would just be requesting product continuously would be the mode you'd be using for your diverter valve. You're either happy or you're not, is what it is. Low level pause is, is what I said. Once you hit that low level, you can say, you know what? Fill another 50 jars and then stop. Mm, that's what that feature is. Um, you know, you guys can get another 20, 30 jars out of there before you really have issues happening. Um, again, that's what that is. Low level agitation. What that is, is once you hit, hit the low level state, as powder falls in through your infeed duct, it will have a tendency to pile up over here. Mm -hmm. Low level agitators will run that agitator regardless of the setting here to level that material out and give you a true reading on that probe. Mm -hmm. And that's what low level agitation is. And I said, so this supersedes that setting, but once we're at a high level, it'll go back to that setting. Okay. And that's what that is. So we're gonna turn that guy off for the time being. We're gonna do that again for this one. We're just gonna put a second delay in there. So that's the same, basically you've got two fillers basically, so you're doing everything twice. Oh, okay. okay. So we were in head two, now we're in head one. I see. Same thing, it's got all the same screens in there. That's what that is. All right, lift and vibration. This is, this is that pneumatic lift. So lift hold is you're gonna come up, you're gonna start your fill and you're gonna drop away. Extended hold means you would come in, lift to whatever your lift setting is, hold for the full duration of the fill. Once the fill stops, we'll set the container down and pass it on through. Um, lift hold time works with normal, or <laughs> works with the hold method. So what that is saying is, jar will come in, it will lift and hold for 1.5 seconds of the fill cycle, and then it will drop away. Normal lift means it'll go in, start, fill, and just drop away at whatever speed you've got it set to. So you've got multiple lift methods. Uh, but if you guys aren't gonna lift, you just go to none, or extended hold, which you could just kind of come in and do one of these. My advice is usually no lift, it's faster. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll try it, first. It, it, it's great when you need it, though. It, it's, it's, it's troubling to do that afterwards. So that's what all that is. Vibration option is not installed. Right. It can be installed. Software is hidden in there. We can, we can enable that feature. We just need to mount the vibrator in there. All right. You can't do that with the air cylinder. This air cylinder? No. Oh, vi cylinder. vibrate? No. no. We, we, we typically put the vibration actually inside the conveyor channel. It will be mounted inside here. Oh, we we cut see. out a little square there and vibrate right through the chain. Yeah. Um, that's what that is, the vibration station. Pneumatic vibrator. Electric. Electric? Electric vibrator, yeah. Um, setup filling accessories. This is not a real important feature, this is more for reference. So if you guys have multiple sets of auger tooling, which you do not, you would come in here and say, well, okay, certain recipe called for that size auger. Oh, I, I want to verify I've got that size auger in the machine. So that's that's just a reference. It doesn't change anything in the machine. The machine doesn't look at that for anything because it has no way of determining what you put in there. Right. So that's what that is. Again, just a reference point for either fill head. Those are your basic setups for generally running the machine. So if you know what you're looking for, it's pretty easy. I always just say, walk through. Um, you can dry run. That'll do everything except dispense powder. It's kind of like what we were doing when we were testing the indexing. Again, does everything except dispense powder. So you can actually go through all your parameters again. I like doing it through the test menu because I can do it one thing at a time. But dry run will actually check all your timing as well. Say so if you say it takes me one second to move these two from here to here, you can verify that one second is enough, or you can watch it and shorten that time up. Okay, so that's what dry run will do. In the test feature, you're not looking at timers. In dry run, you are looking at all the parameters you just put in there, and it'll try to simulate your auger time. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so our next screen over as we walk through here is our test menu. Um, obviously, this, you know, this was the indexing we were doing, so you can turn your conveyor on and off, cycle indexing back and forth, test augers and agitators. Again, it's, it's, it's testing your I.O. of your PLC. You can jog your auger. Jog auger looks at this, however many times. Usually, I'll say if you want to prime it up, put it in like a smaller setting. <laughs> so that's your, your weight as well? Co correct. 
revolutions equates to weight. So is that where you change it if you need to adjust the weight? No, you would actually change it through your setup screen. See what it looks, my bad. Right here, longer one, longer two. Yeah, that's where can you do that on the fly? Uh, I don't believe you can. You gotta stop it? I think so. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say we'd have to stop that. Yeah. Well, you, don't, you don't have to stop. You can run, you just have to go in through the screen. So it, it can be done on the fly, just not from the running screen. You just come in here as the bottles are going, um, and you can just increase. Yeah, you can either pause or do it as you're going, just increase or decrease. So you okay. don't have to stop the machine to change those settings. Settings in here you can all change on the fly during production. Okay. Yeah. It's not like you need to stop in that and go through a sequence uh, and then re-upload that or anything. It'll, it'll, it'll constantly be looking back to that screen. And that screen is a setup screen. Correct. That, that is in your setup screen. Yep. Okay. Easy enough. We'll okay. This a little more. Again, back to the test screen. So this is again testing features. So you can test your auger, jog it a little bit. Pop or empty is as soon as you hit pop or empty, both the agitator and the auger begin to turn. And they turn until you toggle the switch back off. Okay, so keep, keep that in mind. Um, that turns on everything and things come out. Same thing goes for you know, head two, head one, so head one, head two. Um, test your level control signals, test your agitators. So what happens if you flip that? It would send a signal to the diverter. Okay. Basically, basically, we're outputting through the PLC now because these level controls are wild back to the PLC. So, right now, it's sending a signal to change the diverter. Yeah. So we're basically saying head two would be calling for proc now. So you'd want to see your diverter discharge to head two. So this is just one way of checking some of the functionality of the machine without opening the control cabinet and going in there and actually looking at the I/O lighting up on the PLC. Um, so again, head two, head one. Again, you can kind of watch signaling. Again, this doesn't do much for you. This is check where signaling. And testing your lift and vibration. So again, just one method of testing things without having to go in there and actually look at the PLC out there. And Where's the motor controls? The VFD. Or the... The breakers? No, the uh, for the motors for the fillers. Yeah, all, all your overloads and breakers right here. So they turn at 60 hertz? Correct. Okay. Yep. These, these have a mechanical speed change on them, so you've got a three-step puller at the drill press up here. So it will change automatically? Or no, no it's, a, it's a mechanical change if you wanted to change it. Um, okay. It okay. doesn't buy you a lot, I'm going to tell you right now. I mean, yeah. Hundreds of a second. I mean, it's it's a minimal change, and usually it, it so makes it's the set on the lowest one right now. You're set in the middle of the road. You can go faster or slower from here. Yep. You're set at approximately 600 RPM. You can go to 450 or 750 discharge speed of the auger. Oh, it's set 750. Okay, so you are the max speed. All right, let's give a tug. Off it comes. Oh, held in by dowel pins. Exactly. Well, that's that's what brings you back to alignment now. These two bolts are your alignment. Don't mess with them. You guys want to mark them red, mark them red. Those are your alignment. Use the knob to take everything off. And you can remove the hopper or just these knobs, separate the coupling. But that coupling relation to that L bracket is, is your alignment of that coupling to the shaft.